All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So it's week nine of the NFL season. We got the four and three Jets taking on the three and four Chargers, currently in second place in their division. At home, MetLife Stadium, Monday Night Football. Let's freaking go. Let's freak. This game is absolutely enormous, right? And I know, look, it's midseason. The Jets are one game above 500. The Chargers are one game below 500. But this is a game to me that we're going to be talking about, that Chargers fans are going to be talking about in late December, in January, when we start talking about playoff implications, wild card race, seeding, things like that. These games matter. Neither team is perfect here, right? Everybody knows the Jets struggles. We've uh, frankly sucked on third downs and in the red zone. And it seems like every single week we start out slow. And this dates back to the previous couple of seasons under Robert Sala, it wasn't just a Mike LaFleur problem. Um, can we figure out, can, can we come up with some sort of solution or some sort of remedy for these three big areas of concern? And, you know, of course, there's other concerns as well. Offensive line health, uh, not really having a ton of production on the ground. Last week, specifically, we got flagged nine times, gave up a free 85 yards. To me, that's unacceptable. Uh, you know, luckily we did still manage to walk away victorious. You know, we got the win again, four and three on the season. I would much rather be four and three than three and four, but there's still some things to clean up. Will the problems be addressed throughout the week? I got to be honest. I don't know. We haven't really seen Hackett, Sala um, fix these issues, nail these issues in the week leading up to the game because they, again, they keep on popping up literally weekly here. So will it all click this week? I doubt it. My question, what I'm hoping for, is that could we at least show progress in one or maybe two of the categories, right? I'm not expecting, you know, obviously I'm not expecting the Jets to come out and be, uh, you know, go nine of, you know, 13 on third downs and, and go, you know, three for three in the red zone and, you know, come out and, and put up 17 points in the first quarter. I highly doubt that. But what I do expect, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a formidable football team. They have so much, uh, money so much draft assets invested in the squad i it, it, lots of talent here lots of depth i want to see some improvement so you know whether it's just the red zone success i will take that whether it, it, it is starting out the game with a couple of tds or maybe we have 10 points by the end of the first quarter that to me is a win that to me is a win and you know if you flip it and look at the chargers you know they've obviously lost their fair share of games and to be honest with you it shocked a lot of people including myself you know when you think about the chargers you think about justin herbert you think about having stud pass rushers right weapons on offense at wide receiver obviously kellen moore has been a nice addition as well uh you know we're, we're seeing this offense just frankly roll they are top 10 in points yards fourth downs touchdowns and in the red zone in the entire National Football League, top ten in all of those different all of those different categories. Um, in other words, this offense is pretty good, right? It's pretty good. We know what they do. They throw the football. Herbert drops back a lot, and rightfully so. I mean, that's kind of that, that's the approach that I would have too if I was you know riding the Chargers. They really know what they're doing offensively. To me, it just kind of seems like not necessarily saying it's this year specific, but uh, specifically. But to me, it always kind of has kind of seemed like the Chargers in specific plays in like the two minute drive at the end of the game on like the critical fourth down or critical red zone play or whatever it is. That's where the Chargers end up falling short, uh, where you see teams like the Chiefs, you know, convert on situations like that. The Eagles convert on situations like that. And I, I think that's really a big deciding point between the two you know, but, but really between the Chargers and the word elite, if that makes sense. Now, Again, we know what the Chargers are going to bring offensively. They're going to push the ball. They are going to throw the football a lot. So starting out here with the Jets defense, I, I think we really need a big day from our defensive backs, both safeties and corners here. Um, yes, of course, you know, the pass rush always helps getting after Herbert, being able to stop the run. But to be honest, like the Chargers, they don't really run the ball a whole lot. Uh, they're not really too productive with running the football. It is about throwing. It is about showing off Herbert's arm strength, showing off his accuracy, showing off his mobility, uh, extending plays, highlighting the talent on the outside. I'm a big fan of uh, Quentin Johnston, uh, their rookie from TCU. I, I think he's just such a solid player to have 
you know, on a nice rookie contract, he can continue to, to develop. I think he's, he's really going to be a threat as the years go by here. So I think when we take a look at some of the big games that the Jets have played in, we've been able to handle really good quarterbacks, uh, make them uncomfortable, turn the football over. I, I mean, we talked about the Eagles before. How did the Jets win that game? The Eagles beat the Jets in tons of categories, yards, points, time of possession, all these different things, penalties. Where was the one category that the Jets dominated in? Turnovers. Four turnovers from this Jets defense. How many did the offense give up to the Eagles? None. We can look at week one against the Buffalo Bills, right? Josh Allen, multiple INTs against the Chiefs. I know the Jets lost that game, but to me, a couple of debatable calls, uh, one or two plays could have went the Jets' way. I think we, we, we actually could have won that football game. How did the Jets' defense look against Pat Mahomes? Multiple INTs. Should have had more. C.J. Mosley dropped one. Michael Carter's pick got called back from a little like ticky tack jersey hold on Sauce Gardner. Um, I think when you talk about rising to the level of competition, that's what the Jets do every single time. Hopefully it continues. Hopefully we see some of the same. Offensively though, this is the big question mark. The Jets are not winning games because of their offense. They're just not. In fact, they're losing games because of their offense. Now, it's, it's you know, every week it comes down to, can the offense just do enough? The defense is going to keep us in games. The defense is going to be able to, you know, get after quarterbacks and, you know, make plays here and there, um, which is great. You know, it's such a luxury to, to, to say that and have, but it is frustrating that the, it's, it's a literal weekly problem to where it's like, okay, can the offense not turn the football over? Can we get in the red zone? Can we get like a little bit better on third downs and all these different things? I think for me, the biggest key here offensively, I'm letting Zach push the ball. I'm letting Zach Wilson throw the football down the field. Number one, we're just, I'm, I'm just, I'm at the point where I'm just tired of seeing the 15 yard uh, rectangle offense from Nathaniel Hackett, right? The short passing. And, and uh, look, I understand Wink Martindale, good defensive coordinator last week, good defense in the Giants, bad weather. I get that. But, you know, if, if we, again, go back to that Chiefs game, what were the Jets doing? They were getting Zach out to the pocket. They were th flinging the football down the field. I'm not saying it has to be successful every single, you know, throw, obviously, but just doing that, just putting the defense on their heels a little bit, I, I think goes a long way mentally speaking. Uh, not only just that, but you look at how the Chargers have fared against the pass, right? Specifically, de uh, yards per pass, things like that. They're actually last in football. They're last in football in yards per pass and opposing passing yards per game. Now, of course, you can make the argument, well, hold on. If the Chargers offense is going right up, right, you know, right up and down the field, constantly scoring a ton of points, of course, the opposition is going to have to throw the ball too. They have to come back in games. They have to keep up with the Chargers pace. So they're going to be dropping back and throwing it a ton. Of course, that is 1000% fair. But again, if we're comparing all 32 teams in football and the Chargers are literally dead last in both of those categories, I think there is maybe a little bit more to the story there. So for me, I, I feel like that's where Zach's at the most comfortable. The Chargers obviously struggle in that. We haven't really seen a whole lot of that from Nathaniel Hackett's offense. So it could catch LA off guard a little bit. And uh, last but not least, it puts fear in the Chargers' heads as the game goes on. Hey, the Jets will actually push the ball. They will throw it down the field. They aren't going to be just throwing screens and curls and slants all day, right? They they do have the potential to pull it off a of play action to roll Zach out on a bootleg. Uh, my only sort of issue or concern with, with, you know, throwing the ball, really trying to push it deep, trying to emphasize that, is the Chargers pass rushers against our offensive line. What's the offensive line going to look like? I don't know. I couldn't tell you, right? Dwayne Brown supposedly is, you know, on his way back. Uh, is Becton switching back over to right tackle? You know, Connor McGovern is, you know, he's on IR. Wes Schweitzer also hurt. Who's going to be the team's starting center? Joe Tipman, his return is up in the air. AVT's out for the season. It's, it's just, you know, problem after problem, uh, you know, question mark after question mark. And it, it, it's pretty frustrating. So realistically speaking, you know, eight step dropbacks for Zach Wilson off of play action where he can climb the pocket. Pretty unrealistic, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. We'll see what the starting five offensive line looks like. Uh, but I, I want to end the video off by just saying this. 
for whatever reason, the Jets rise to the occasion. Whenever they play a good team, whenever they play a good quarterback, they rise to the occasion. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.